friends! Welcome back to day four of our magnets. I'm super... Wait, day four? Today is... What day is today? Wednesday. Day three. Day three. Oh my goodness. The week is getting away from me. I am so excited because today we are going to combine last week's electricity with this week's magnetism. And we're going to see how the two are kind of twins and one and the same. And that'll be really fun. First, I'm going to go over what you guys will need. And I know that Evan's been getting some comments with questions about what we can substitute. So I will go over that too. And then we'll get to our shoutouts and we'll learn how to make it. So today, what you need. Ideally, you need like a nail, but I know some of us don't have the nails. What you need is something that is not magnetic. And the way we can test that is we can check it here. Like it's not picking up something, but can be magnetized. So it does have the ability to be magnetized. So it will get picked up by a magnet, just like this stuff. So if you don't happen to have a nail at home, you could use something like this pair of scissors and you can make your electromagnet out of the scissors. You could make it out of a paper clip, but this is really thin. I'm not sure if that would work as great. Um, so anything like a nut, a bolt, as long as you take a magnet to it, sticks to it, you will be good to go. Um, you need some things that are not magnetized that we can test with. I just have some paper clips. But the same thing is true, doesn't matter if it's paper clips. Scissors are not magnetic, but they can be magnetized. That is, they don't pick up anything on their own, but they can, if it, a magnet is there, they can be magnetized. Um, you're gonna need some wire. I have really skinny wire that is insulated. Insulated means that it's just not like metal on the outside, so that a lot of the insulated wires you'll see will be covered in plastic. If you don't have an insulated wire, if you just have plain bare wire, what you're gonna do is you're also going to need some tape and we will solve that problem as we go. So you don't need to worry about that. And then you also need a battery of some sort. It doesn't need to be a huge battery. I actually like the smaller batteries just because it doesn't get as hot, but it also will not make it as strong of a magnet. All right, and I've got scissors to do some cutting because um, we will need to strip the ends of this wire because it is insulated. I have some tape also so that we can tape it all together and that's all we need. So like a few things that are not magnetic, something you're gonna make magnetic that can be magnetic, again, touches the magnet and it attaches some wire and a battery. And that's all we need, which is kinda cool. And if you have questions about if your supplies will work, you can always type that into the comments and Evan will bring that up and I can troubleshoot a way around it to make it work for you guys too, which is awesome. All right, who do we have here? We had quite the conversation. I think this is like the longest conversation I've ever seen yes. beforehand. And we have someone who we don't often see, number one. Ooh. She's awesome. She misses Tiny Dancer. It's Kaya! Kaya! Kaya is our Tiny Dancer fan. The moment you said Tiny Dancer, I knew. Yeah, I of knew course. it was Kaya. Of course. Hi, Kaya. I'm so glad you're here today. And following Kaya is Miss Naomi. Hello, Naomi. Ooh. We got, where's George and Henry? I think number you three. Know, you know what? They're almost number three. Oh. But number three is, in fact, our Zoom buddy. <laughs> Kelly! With the colored hair, Miss Kelly. to parents if you don't want your kids on YouTube you can always put them over into our zoom classroom where it, you are live right there they can watch us live and they can still chat with us and ask us questions live so Evan can read them out to us and you just need to get into our zoom classroom which is on patreon.com slash Rosie research supports a dollar a day or not a dollar a day a dollar a week which is a coffee a month and pretty soon for like we're gonna take a break in for part of June and then July, we'll start doing our activities per month. So it'll be like a dollar per month, which is pretty fantastic. It's pretty like, cool. You really can't get kid science better than that. Better than Dr. Erica? No. <laughs> no, that's like, let me inflate my ego. Anyhow, who else do we have Number here? Number four. You know they're always in the top five. It's George, George and Henry. Henry. Hello, boys. It's great to see you today. And George you know, had a great project. This week, the little fishing one. Mm. Loved it. He made a game out of it. It was cool. There is a person in YouTube, mm. and they don't have their name, but they're very talkative. Ooh. It's the party girl. 
Hello, Hello, party girl. Who are the party girls? They're very familiar, so I'm willing to bet it's somebody we do know. It is probably I'm somebody we know. I'm just not sure who it is. Mm, and they're being sneaky. It's not me. Intriguing. Because I am actually a dad and not a party girl. He's not a girl. No. No, he's like the party dad. Party dad. Well, hello, party girl. I'm glad you're here to join us. Um, the question was aluminum wire. Aluminum, yeah, any metal wire will work as long as you can put electrons through it. So it needs to be a metal. And if it's not insulated, we will solve that problem in just a little bit. We yeah. have Mr. Mimberj Island walking the trails of Blakely Harbor. Abel! Hello, Abel! It's great to see you! He says hi from me. <laughs> I like it. Then we've got Rohan! Hello, Rohan! It's Rohan. awesome to see you today, too. And maybe your little brother's joining you. Because little siblings love magnets. I love magnets. You don't need to be little to like magnets. I love magnets. <laughs> I love magnets. I love science, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> we got Miss Double Name. Mm. Sunlight is created. It shines out. Ray in Ray. Ray Ray. Hello, Ray Ray. I should do it. I should make it a puzzle every time. It just should. <laughs> It'll only take us an hour to get through our hello. Right? His name stands for a Constellation. He's wearing Orion. Hello, Orion. Hello, Orion. How are you? I'm glad you're here. And Naomi, I did say hi to you. We I said hi, you but you know what, Naomi? You might have you might have popped off for a moment. You were number two on the list. Yeah, let's give her a double eye. Hi, Hello, Naomi. Naomi. Um, and I saw Andrea pop in Zoom for a second. I'm not sure if she's still there. Okay. But, um, well, hello, Andrea. That's what we got. Awesome. They're excited. They want to start electrifying metal. Mm, yes. It's going to be so much fun. Let's do it. All right. Well, let's get started. So today, we are going to make a magnet out of something that is not magnetic, which is kind of interesting. So on Monday, we sort of touched on this idea that magnets were really due to electrons zipping around, around their nucleuses. So like an iron nuclei, and then like we have these electrons that zip around, they zip around in all different directions, but in some very special materials, and these materials are the ones that end up being magnetic, each little nuclei, it doesn't zip around totally randomly. It actually has sort of this net direction that it goes like in a circle. And that creates a tiny little magnet, which is kind of interesting. So you can't get magnets with electricity and you can't do electricity without creating some sort of magnetic field. In fact, that's why we call it the electromagnetic field, which is kind of cool. Um, so we have the gravitational force, we have the electromagnetic force, and then we have the strong and the weak forces, and those are like, boom, you've got them all. What? So many forces. So cool. There's four. Kind of amazing. It explains everything. What? Wait, you can understand I know. everything with just three? Four, four, four forces. Four. I know. Don't worry, you've got like 13 years of learning post high school to be able to do all that. But this is really cool because everything, you know, we used to think that the electric force was one thing and the magnetic force was one thing. And some people tied those together and realized they're actually the same thing. You might be like, Dr. Erica, no way. I mean, electricity, it lights up my light bulbs, it puts on LEDs, it makes really cool circuit cards. Magnets stick to my fridge. There is no way that they are one and the same thing. And yet today, I'm going to prove it to you, which is kind of cool. So this is a nail. It's a plain Jane nail. It's nothing too exciting. I mean, it doesn't pick up anything. A magnet will stick to it, which is kind of cool. And that tells me something about this nail. It tells me that there are parts of this nail that can be magnetized. And inside there's like these little teeny tiny magnets. But if we were to look at like a map of this nail, you would have some magnets pointing this way and some of the little magnets pointing that way and some pointing this way and some pointing that way and some pointing that way and some pointing down. They'd be all different directions. And what happens is they all sort of cancel each other out and you just get this boring nail. In this one, in a real magnet that like can pick things up, you don't have some going this way and some going that way and some going this way and some going that way and some doing this and doing, you don't have that. They all go the same way. And in fact, if we were able to point all the little tiny sections of magnets in here the same way, it would also become a magnet, which is pretty neat. But it itself is not magnetic. It can't pick up any paper clips, doesn't stick to our scissors. 
we can double check that I'm not being sneaky, that like my wire is not magnetic. So my wire can't pick up any paper clips. It can't pick up scissors. It can't even stick to my magnet. Yours might stick to the magnet. If you're using like a steel or aluminum wire, it might stick. But mine doesn't even stick to a mat. Like it's not even, there's nothing. There's nothing here with the batteries. I could check my batteries. My batteries don't pick up anything. All right, oh, this guy sticks to a battery, but this is a big magnet. So that's not surprising, batteries are metal. It's not sticking to anything. Tape is not magnetic. I can check that, yep. I can check my scissors. Oh, my scissors have been a little magnetized, interesting. Let's see if we can take that off. We can maybe, let's see if we can rub that around. Oh, no, yeah, we could, um, it's because I was playing with these earlier. <laughs> you can add, you can make something magnetic by doing this, literally by just, sharpening your magnet and it will ooh, see now it's picking up more so maybe if I want to use this and I want to be convinced that now it's picking up three um, I want to be convinced that it's not magnetic if you didn't have your nail you could try a different pair of scissors and find one that are not here we go are not magnetized right Hi. fantastic so it doesn't pick anything up all right so right now the only magnets I have on my table are these little black ones I'm gonna put them to the side because I'm not going to use them. All right? Those ones, I feel like that might be cheating if I'm trying to convince you that electricity yeah. and magnetism it, it are the same thing. It picked it up. All right? So what we're going to do is you're going to take your nail, or if you didn't have the nail, like something metal, like the scissors, that you're going to create into a magnet. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to wrap some wire around it. Now, I know some of you might not have insulated wire, so what I want you to do if you don't have insulated wire is you're gonna take a piece of tape and you're gonna rip it and you're just gonna cover up your nail so that when we attach the wire to it, our current doesn't go through the nail, it goes around the nail, all right? So you could just like cover it up like this and then you could cut it out. So I just like sort of fold it over that tape. And this is, you only need to do this if you don't have, if you have uninsulated wire. So if you don't have like that plastic around the wire. All right, so you can do that. And this will work fine because remember, we learned that the force of magnetism doesn't actually matter if it has something that's non-magnetic between it. All right, so like your fridge, it's not like the outer part of the fridge that's magnetic. It's the metal behind it and the plastic is not magnetic. So I could still stick this here and it's still magnetic even though I have that paper there. All right, so if you don't have the insulated wire, you're gonna use that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take about an inch of your wire and you're gonna leave it sort of at the top. All right, it doesn't have to be an inch, it could be longer, you can leave extra if you want, doesn't matter. And you're just gonna pinch it and hold it in place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it around our nail. Because what happens when those little electrons move, they actually create that magnetic field. They create the magnet. And if we have a magnetic field, I can align all the little teeny tiny countries of magnets in here that are going all different directions. I can make them all point the same way, which will make it into a magnet, right? And I can do that with a current because those electrons that we learn inside the nucleus, they create a little magnetic field. Well, I can create a really big current by putting it through the wire is exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna wrap it around the wire just in loops. And this is a great thing. If you have a sibling and you guys are doing this together, a great thing you could test is one of you could do 10 loops and one of you could do 100 loops. Or one of you could try 50 loops versus 100 loops. You could try all different amounts of loops. And you're just gonna keep looping this. And if you want, you can push it down. Now, if you have non-insulated wire, we do need to make sure these loops don't touch, so you might kind of do fewer loops and loop it more like this, where these loops don't touch. You'll just end up with a weaker magnet, but we do need to make sure that we force the electrons into spinning into those loops. We don't want them to be able to go straight along it. And that's because electrons, when they're moving, their magnetic field actually goes around it. So if we move them into a circle, their magnetic field goes straight. And there's this thing called the right hand rule. You can actually roll your hand. Our magnetic field will go this way or this way, depending on which way I connect it to the battery. But they have to spin. If they don't spin, 
they won't do it. And of course they won't choose to go the longer path if they have a shorter path. So if you don't have insulated wire, please make sure that these little loops don't touch. But if you do have insulated wire, you can really push those down to get as many loops as you can onto it. And our loops need to go the same way. So you don't want to like sort of loop forward and then loop backwards and then loop forward and loop backwards because you'll have some electrons making a, a magnet going that way and then some going that way and it'll start to cancel it out. So it won't really, it might feel like it'll help you, but it won't actually help you. All right, so we're just gonna keep spinning this around our nail, just like this. Oops, I got a knot in my wire. Hmm, there we go. And again, you could add more loops around it to see Another experiment you could do is you could change the size of the battery and see if the size of the battery changes how magnetic it is, which is another great option. So now I've got this guy. I'm going to just cut my wire. And I'm going to give myself a tail. So I have a tail at the beginning and a tail at the end. So that's really important because I need to connect the battery from, to one side and the other so that the electrons from the battery, when I get the current, will go down here. They'll spin a whole bunch of times, which is going to make that magnetic field. So they're going to spin, 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 and then they're going to come back up through the battery to complete the circuit. The reason why I like to use these smaller ones is if you've been in circus class with me before, you might be like, wait a second, Dr. Erica, if I connect a nine volt battery straight across to like one wire, you might know what happens. And that is your wire will get really hot because you're not putting it through anything. There's nothing that's slowing those little electrons down. They're just running as fast as they can. There's no light bulb for them to like bounce around in or go down slides in. So if you're doing this and you're using a nine volt, just know that it can get pretty warm somewhat quickly. Yeah, question. Um, Callie's got speaker cable and it's not yes. holding in place. It's not holding the wire. Like I think the plastic. Because the plastic's really big. And, and I think speaker cable is braided, is it not? I don't know. Uh, some of it is, yeah. So, Callie, if yours is too big to go around your nail, you might try putting it around sort of like the barrel of the scissors, which is bigger, because your wiring is much larger. So that might be a solution for you of just, instead of wrapping it around a nail, wrap it around this, and it will stay in place better. You can also use like a little piece of tape to keep these items in place if you'd like to. That's totally fine. Um, tape will not be a problem. The only things we need to make sure is that we can connect from this wire to the battery and this wire to the battery. And right now, if you have insulated wire, you can't do that because we have a little bit of plastic at the end. So if I kind of attach this, nothing's gonna happen because I'm just touching plastic and not metal. So I don't have any electrons going through there. But what I can do is I can scrape off this part where if you have like the thicker insulated, you can use your wire cutters to scrape off that part. And you can just scrape it off often with a pair of scissors. This one is like so thin. It's like a little bit of red. I don't know what they dip it in, but it's like very, very small. Just scraping it with the scissors a few times or sandpaper works really, really well in getting that wire exposed. All right, so I'm just gonna, it's sort of hard to, here, maybe can I use, these ones split a little bit more. I'm trying to, yeah, I can't quite get the right angle. Um, I want you guys to see it. Let's see, what do I have that? Yeah, nice. Here, I could use here. some tweezers. We'll use some tweezers. And we can just press, I'm just pressing down and sort of scraping that red off of mine. You would be scraping off whatever color the insulation is on yours. And sometimes you can even do it with your fingers. And I don't know, let me put a piece of tape down for a little bit better for you guys to see it. You might be able to see how it's sort of like this red here and now it's more of a copper color. I'm not sure if we can see that on the screen. No. Okay. Mine, I can see the color of my wire change right there, which tells me that it is stripped, which is exactly what I need. And so I'm gonna do the other side. I'm just gonna press down and take off that tiny little bit of red that is the insulation there. All right. Looks like we got Micah here. Oh, hello, Micah. And Ruby says hi. Hello. Ruby. All right, so this is what I have so far. And if you're just joining us, the tape on my nail is not necessary if you have insulated wire. It's just, it was a way to show people if you didn't have insulated wire, 
how you could make that work. But there also has to be a gap. If you have yes, if you have insulated, if you have non-insulated wire, you also need to make sure these coils don't touch each other because our electrons will choose the shortest way and they will just go straight. And our then our magnetic field would sort of go around and around. Whereas if I make my electrons go around and around, our magnetic field goes straight, which gives us something that we can use to pick things up. All right, so now I have a nail. Maybe I have some tape, maybe I don't. And I have a wire and we can still double check that it's not doing much here. I mean, can't pick anything up. I'm not attracted to anything. Mm, not so exciting. But that's because I don't have a current right now. I have no electricity in here. And I need those moving electrons to create that magnetic field that's gonna align everything. So I gotta make my electrons move. And the way I can do that is with a battery. And if you want to, you could even tape your little magnet to the battery like this if you wanted to. That's totally fine. That's an easy way to like sort of make this magnet that you can carry around in your pocket. And interestingly, this is actually how motors work. Magnetic uh, motors, brush motors, which is all the motors that you find in like your RC cars or your, or your toys. What about Tesla? Is that a brush motor? Probably even Tesla. Um, they use coiling and some magnets to create the things to spin, which is cool. And we'll create some spinning tomorrow. All right. So I need to attach one wire to one side of the battery and one to the, the back side of the battery so that it will put the current through and create that magnetic field. And so what I'm going to do, I have a little extra here. I'm just going to wrap this around and I'm sort of noticing actually didn't do maybe the best job I could have getting all of this insulation off. So I'm going to scrape this side a little bit. Just make sure I get really good contact with that battery. We got Evie and Calvin. Oh, just hello, Evie and Calvin. Oh, it's been a while. I'm so excited you guys are here today. All right, so we are going to tape this piece down. And you want to make sure, again, you're getting good um, contact. I'm a little bit worried. I feel like I kind of still see some red on mine, but we're going to tape it down and see what happens. I also am not entirely sure. These are rechargeable batteries that we have. We might have to send Evan out to go grab some other batteries. We're going to find out. All right. So again, I still don't have any electrons going through. I still am not doing anything very interesting, but what I can do is I can start to send those electrons through by attaching the bottom of the battery. So this is gonna complete my circuit. I always need a full circuit for things to go from one end of the battery into the other end, and right now we can't. So what I can do, I can use some electricity, I'll put that down. Oop, hang on. We might need a different battery. Zoop. All right. All right, we're gonna troubleshoot, which is perfect, because this might not happen for you at home either. So, we can try a different battery. And while we try a different battery, I'm also going to really scrape off this red. I'm noticing that when I flip it over, I sort of have some in some places. And if that's the spot that touches the battery, that's not gonna work out very well for me. So I need to make sure I get it all. If you have thicker wire, it's gonna be a lot easier for you because you can just see the wire come out. The insulation on these little copper wires is always like so so thin and it's so similar to the color of that copper it's really hard to kind of notice if you've got it so we're just gonna i'm gonna do i see on this side too yeah i'm gonna just get this a little bit better so that we can troubleshoot and you know what all of science is always troubleshooting trying to find out what did work and what didn't work there's no reason to get upset because it's science it'll work the science is behind it. Just means that we've got to fix something. I'm actually noticing there's a lot of insulation still. So I'm gonna really get that insulation off. All right, let's see. If I look all the way around this wire, that looks pretty good to me. I wonder if it was the insulation or the battery and we could test that by trying the battery again after I get this insulation off. See, I'm seeing a side that still has it. And if you use like sandpaper, it might be a little easier. You can just sort of wrap it around it. I got another wire for you too. But that is okay. I can start to see the shiny too now. Ah, see, I just didn't do a very good job last time. And that's okay. I am not worried about it. 
I am not worried about when things don't work out just because I know that if I keep trying and I troubleshoot it, it will work. All right, here we go. Let's see, I think this is much better. Let's see if it was the battery or if it was our wires or maybe it was a combination of the two. We'll find out, let's see. Let's try this battery again because I'm really curious. That's just where my mind goes. I wanna know, which, which one was it? If I change everything and it works, then it's great that it works, but I just don't know what wasn't working. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna tape this here. Maybe I'll just even press this one on for now, just as a quick check. Oh, I should, I need to have this tip off so that I can use it as my little magnet. But then I'm gonna press over here and I will press right here on the bottom. I need to make sure the metal pieces contact each other. Ooh, nope, we're still not magnetic. All right, let's try a new battery. This is great troubleshooting for everybody at home because you always, I don't know, sometimes things work perfect and then you're like, wait, but what about my stuff? Why isn't mine working? All right, let's try it on this one. And we will, this one should work because it's brand new. And zoop. And let's see. Oh, I gotta hold it. Really good. I'm kind of thinking the button part's the harder, so I think I might tape it to the bottom. And then we will hold it in place. And you might already have yours working, which is awesome. I'm gonna tape that in really good onto the bottom. So then I can hold just this little bubble piece right here. And there we go. I can now pick up a paper clip. And if I stop the electricity, it will stop. It will stop working if I move my finger off that little bubble. So I can put my finger back on this bubble, get the electricity moving again, and I can pick it back up. Mine's kind of weak. It's not very strong. You notice how it's not really strong, but the moment I drop the electricity off the battery, it stops working. That's because the magnet, I all of those little countries inside of magnets placing different directions that were aligned by the electrons moving are no longer. And um, you could experiment how you can make it a stronger magnet. We have a question from Abel. He says his circuit is heating up, but his nail won't pick anything up. Mm, Abel, awesome. Let's pause for a second. Take it off of your battery. And then I'm curious, Abel, is your wire insulated or not insulated? Just so we know what we're starting from. So that's one thing to check. And I do want to make sure, Abel, that you did check that whatever it is you're using is attracted to a magnet so that it can be magnetized. And then we'll troubleshoot. So let us know about those things. And again, mine is not very strong, but I'm kind of, I'm okay with that. I mean, oh, where did it go? Naomi is asking, can we touch the wire to the battery with the skin of our finger? Yes, I am doing that right now. I have a smaller battery. I have a double A battery. I'm okay. It's not hurting me at all. It does get warm. Mine is like warm, but definitely not hot. Like it feels like sort of lukewarm water for mine. Um, but if you're using a nine volt, it's going to get hotter much quicker. All right. And that's part of the reason why mine is also not a super great magnet. You can see it a little bit, but it's not a lot. And the ways that I could increase this is I could add a whole bunch more loops or I could add a stronger battery. Ron is asking about the, scraping the insulated wire. Maybe you can show him with that wire. Yes, with this one. No, no, the red one. Oh, yeah. All right, here's another type of insulated wire that we have. This is probably more like the wire you guys might have at home. So there's sort of red plastic on the outside and on the inside I have some wire. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'll show you how to take it off. So I have these great pliers that have a wire cutter slash wire stripper on it. So this is what the wire looks like on the inside of mine. All right, and that is a stripped wire. So this red part is the insulation that keeps the electricity inside because the electricity can't go through the plastic. And then this is the part of the wire that conducts the electricity. So the electrons flow through here. And you might notice I have a whole bunch of different wires. Some of them are called solid core, where it's just one thick wire. And some of them are not. And this is like the kind that's not 
I don't think there's a name for it. It's just regular wire. It's got a bunch of pieces in it. Um, so if you have wire like this and you want to strip it off and you don't have wire strippers like what I have, you can often, and you probably, Rohan, might need a parent for this. What you can do is you can take scissors and really gently, just really gently snip a little bit. You're not trying to snip through. And then I rotate it. And I really gently, again, not trying to slip through, and I rotate it. And sometimes you can even rotate it as you're sort of doing that gentle snipping. You can go backwards and rotate it the other way. And I'm just trying to really gently make a little crease in that spot. And then what I can do is I can really, again, gently hold the scissors firmly in place so I'm not squeezing them down. And then you can try to pull it through and you can see that it's sort of coming out. So I have some wire coming out. Once you have some, you can keep doing that with the scissors if you want to, or you can try and see if you can't use your nails to just pull it off like that. That's another way to strip the wire. This is a great skill to have. I'm going to show you guys again on how to add or to strip some wire if you don't have wire strippers. So you take your scissors really gently. You got to make sure it's like you're trying to just get through most of that red part and then you really gently put it around like that. And then even sometimes once it's sort of cut through, I can see the metal there. If it's cut through all the way around. Sometimes you can even just pinch like that in the middle and pull. You pinch and pull without even having to do that part. And then this is what you could connect to your battery. And if you're creating a larger electromagnet, you could have done something that looks like this here. We could wrap this around a whole bunch of times to make a whole bunch of loops. Because again, the more loops that we have, the stronger our electromagnet would be. We could even try this since we're part way there. And I'm going to put like a lot of loops because this is really thick wire. So what looks like a lot of loops is this is only like maybe like 10 or 15 loops, which is not much at all. Like we really need it to be a whole lot more than that. So, I mean, you're aiming to get like 50 to 100 loops on yours. It's like really windy. It's like a meditative process. And I'm kind of feeling like with this wire, maybe it won't. It was worry, um, saying that he's having some trouble. He's, I think he's going to search for a new nail that can be picked up because the nail has to be able to be picked up. Yes, right? the nail must be able to get picked up. Whatever you use as the core, as the metal core piece, must be able to get picked up by a magnet. And that tells us that that metal can be magnetized. It has those different countries of magnets pointing in all different directions. Some metals don't have that. So they don't even have the ability to be magnetized and have those countries aligned to create a stronger magnet. And now I'm super curious about whether or not this is going to work for us. So we're just going to try it. And I don't know because, again, this is we don't have very many loops. The other wire I was using is so skinny that you can have a lot of loops and just a little bit of space. But we can try and see what that will be. It'll be especially interesting because why not try, right? So I'm going to tape this, these guys in place so they don't sort of come off of my loops. I'm curious. But it's kind of, this is a really fun way you, to really see that electricity and magnetism are one and the same thing. Electricity creates magnetism and you can use magnetism to move electrons around. All right, let's see, let's get this guy off. There we go. And we can attach this to our battery. Maybe we'll use even a brand new one. These are batteries from the dollar store, so they're not super great batteries. By any means. We can try, let's see. If I hook these two up, there we go. So that, ooh, that works pretty decent, which is kind of cool. It picked up some stuff for us even though it's not normally magnetic. Oh, actually, no, maybe this is... Oh, I did it the wrong scissors, my friends. These were the ones that were magnetic already. They were magnetized. Oh, bummer. Can you see if you can slide it on and slide it off. Okay. Evan wants to know, can we do it? Can we swap it quickly? Let's try. Let's try it out. 
Check that the other ones aren't magnetized, though. I think, I'm pretty sure the other ones are not magnetized. Yeah. We tried that. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can't sort of slip this on quickly. Eee! No, these ones are bigger. <laughs> Ugh! We'll have to wait for another day. Because now I have all these loops, which is kind of cool. But I have all these loops. Let's see. Let's try these ones. Let's double check. Oh, they're magnetized, though. Is there a way to so, get rid of magnetizing? Um, is there, we could try, like, sort of, yeah, I don't have a great way to get rid of the magnetism. Usually heat is the best way. If you heat something up, it will mix everything up for you again, so you get all those countries of magnets that are in all different directions with the heat. Um, but I don't really want to set our scissors on fire. <laughs> Well, not that we can set them on fire, but I don't want to heat them up right now. Um, but if you tried with scissors, I would be really interested. I mean, maybe in Zoom, I will sit here and wrap this really skinny wire around a pair of scissors that is not magnetic, the pink and white ones, and we can test it and see, because that would be super interesting. I'm very excited. Um, hopefully this helps you guys. If you either don't have the insulated wire, again, make sure that you cover whatever it is in like tape and like not copper tape that we've been using, just like a masking tape or a scotch tape that will act as an insulator and then make sure your wire doesn't touch as you coil. Um, other than that, I think that was the main problems we have. Oh, and you do need to make sure, like Abel, you need to make sure that whatever you use, if you have like a copper nail, copper is not magnetic. It can't be magnetized. That wouldn't work. So whatever it is should get picked up by a magnet if you have a strong magnet nearby. We should be able to pick it up. Like I could make an electromagnet out of these paper clips, or I could make it out of these tweezers. Um, I could make it out of my knife. I'm trying to think, of, I couldn't make it out of this wire clearly because it doesn't pick up that copper wire. So that can be a problem. And not all metals are magnetic. So that is a tricky thing to think about. Other than that, mm -hmm. do we have other questions? Uh, it will still have trouble with this nail, but I think maybe we can try and sort it out once we look at his. Yeah, we'll thing. troubleshoot it in Zoom, Abel. And other than that, I don't see any other cool. questions coming through yet. Awesome. So tomorrow we are going to use sort of the same principles and we're going to make a moving kinetic sculpture with wire. And this time uninsulated wire is what we're going to use. So you definitely want to keep that uninsulated wire around. Um, and we're going to use magnets and a battery and some wire and create motion just like we do with wheels in the car, which is really cool. All right, my friends, thank you for joining us on YouTube as we combined electricity and magnetism to see the electromagnetic field today. Tomorrow we will play with the electromagnetic field some more and learn a little bit more about it. Um, and then right now we'll go over to Zoom for lunch. All right, we'll see you soon. I hope you join us tomorrow. Goodbye, my YouTube friends, and hello to my Zoom friends.